Hey, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be testing out four uh, Motorola phones that I bought off eBay uh, for the price on screen here. As you can see, it was about thirty-six seventy-five or something like that. The uh, total cost uh, of the uh, entire lot, it was like, I think $30 plus uh, $7 shipping or something like I forgot, but the total is like $36.75. Uh, three of which of these are prototypes. So these three are prototype devices, Verizon wireless testing samples. Uh, this one is also a Motorola uh, prototype itself and a Verizon uh, testing sample uh, to as much as I can tell uh, with the uh, weird writing here. I'll get to that writing in a bit. Um, but these two are definitely um, Verizon wireless testing samples and this one uh, seems to be just a standard unit. However, it was with the uh, four of these. So most likely uh, whoever owned these three also owned this and probably they worked for Motorola or something like that. Uh, I found these by accident. I was not searching for them. I was just scrolling through some random Motorola flip phones and I saw the, the white writing on this one and this one and I realized that's not normal. So I clicked it and uh, turns out these three are prototypes. This one has the marking as well, as you can see. Prototype unit, Motorola confidential property. Uh, you can see it there. This is the uh, Motorola Riser Z6. And we'll talk about all four of these phones. We'll power them on, see if they work, and we'll uh, go from there. So as usual, before jumping right in, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below uh, so we can uh, start a discussion uh, also if you have any questions don't forget to leave them down in the uh, uh, comment section below as well so I can answer your questions uh, you can ask me anything about these phones uh, if you like uh, whether you own one of these phones uh, do you want to get uh, some of these phones for your collection um, are you looking for them on eBay or anything like that just any questions or uh, comments that you want to leave just leave a comment down in the comment section below and we can start a discussion or I can answer your questions also don't forget to check out my social media which is linked down in the description below which includes instagram discord and twitter and now let's jump right into this video all right so let's start off with the one on the left here this is the 2007 uh, motorola rocker or also known as the motorola riser z6c so uh, it, it had two names, either the Rocker or the Riser. However, it was called the Z6C as a whole. So Motorola Rocker slash Riser Z6C from 2007. Uh, it was also known as the Motorola Z6 Global Edition. However, uh, this one was more prominent on the Verizon wireless network. Um, this does not seem to have any form of uh, Verizon uh, wireless branding on it. Neither did it have any before because uh, all of these phones, especially these three got a good scrubbing uh, with rubbing alcohol because the bodies as you can see they had the rubber uh, coating on the plastic which I really hate with these old Motorola devices the rubber coating I just despise the coating um, and uh, these were stuck full of like the coating that had like dissolved over time and just become this rubber gooey mess so I had to like basically scrape it off with rubbing alcohol um, this thing didn't, as, as I remember, this didn't have any wireless, uh, more Verizon wireless branding on it. I say that because some of the branding came off these devices when uh, I uh, scrubbed them, I uh, removed the rubber. As you can see, there's still a lot of rubber on there, but it's no longer that sticky. So we'll get to those in a bit. Um, however, this one did not have that sort of branding. Like I showed you earlier, this, uh, it had this marking over here, Motorola. Uh, I, this, this part was probably written by Motorola. This marking is a uh, Verizon marking. Verizon prototypes do have this form of marking. Um, it is unique to Verizon phones. It's not only unique to Motorola phones. I've seen uh, prototype Verizon LG devices with the same marking system as well. Uh, so it's a Verizon marking system for testing units and not a Motorola system. It's, it's common throughout all brands that were uh, given to the Verizon wireless network. This, however, prototype unit, Motorola confidential property, that's from Motorola themselves. They probably gave this unit to Verizon uh, to test stuff out. So let's open the battery bay now. Uh, three of these phones, uh, these three, the prototypes, uh, all three of them came with their own batteries, but uh, we're not gonna bother ch uh, charging those batteries and testing them. I have a fully 
fully charged compatible battery over here and we have another battery for uh, this thing over here because uh, it uses a different battery um, but this will work on these three so let's go ahead and open the battery bay now i've cleaned these out quite uh, thoroughly so um I al i've already seen most of them on the inside but let's cover some of the information here and as you can see uh, Motorola Inc. FCC ID pending XXXX assembled in USA. So uh, the FCC ID pending means this phone has already been designed and approved and all that stuff by Motorola and Verizon and all that stuff. So they've submitted it to whatever uh, certification authority, the FCC or whatever. Um, and the FCC ID for that model, for this specific model is pending. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, let's go ahead and put a battery in here. And uh, this thing doesn't have a proper IMEI number either. Let me show you. Um, as you can see here, uh, the MEID, that's aka the IMEI number for certain phones, the MEID starts with A, uh, a and then four zeros. Um, so yeah, it's not a proper IMEI number either. Uh, let me put the battery in and we'll see if this thing works. And by the way, the Z6C, like I said, is the global edition. It does have a lot of differences from the standard Z6, uh, like it's missing a flash. The display is also slightly smaller. However, it has a bigger uh, battery by design and uh, it has a better battery life. So it's a CDMA device uh, for the Verizon wireless network. Okay, there we go. Uh, it powers on. And uh, though they called it the global edition, I don't know, I, I, the, the naming system is a bit weird. I don't know why they called it the global edition. I think it was only released on Verizon Wireless. I'm not sure. But as you can see, it works perfectly. Uh, it loads up, invalid battery, that's fine. Come on, stop doing that. I've seen that error before. Okay. This is running that Moto Mag X OS, as I remember. So it's a Linux based OS, uh, Moto Mag X. And uh, this is the OS. Uh, it's got some inbox. Let's see what's in there. Is it like, okay. So those are like fake test emails or uh, fake uh, test messages. So uh, yeah, this was a testing device. This was not someone's personal use device. So there's some fake messages in there, fake, uh, um, SMS messages. Um, that's interesting to say. So this phone was probably uh, tested on for all sorts of Verizon needs. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it works just fine. Uh, it's uh, scrolling through the menu. I'm pretty sure we can change the menu view here, uh, but we'll do that uh, separately uh, in a different video. Like I always do, I'll cover this phone in a separate video itself. So definitely stay tuned for that by hitting the subscribe button. So yeah, the Motorola Z6C, the riser or rocker Z6C uh, prototype uh, unit does work just fine. I don't see any major differences uh, as a prototype unit from the standard Z6C. The Z6C is not a common phone. It is quite rare. Uh, it's not super, super rare, but it is rare. And uh, the, it's rarer than the Z6. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I cannot have, I don't have another one to compare it to. I don't even have a Z6, a standard Z6, so maybe in the future, but I don't see any major differences, uh, from this phone and a standard Z6. Um, so it's probably just all software differences, but we'll test this phone in a future video. But for now, uh, we will keep it to a side. It works just fine. So yeah, let's move on to the next phone. All right, so next we have the Motorola W775 from 2008, the newest phone on this list, uh, W775 from 2008. This is what the back originally used to look like. Uh, the, I When I uh, started taking off the rubber, the uh, markings uh, also came out of the, uh, because they were basically on the rubber. And up top on this phone, it said prototype device. Uh, was it this phone or no, it was this phone. It said prototype not for sale or something like that. Here's the photo uh, you can see on screen here. That's what the back originally used to look like. It was just so sticky that uh, I just had to get rid of that rubber. It's still sticky. So uh, that's one downside about these old Motorola devices. They stick after a long time. This thing is still stuck. See, it still sticks. So yeah, uh, kind of a bummer. I had to get rid of that writing. It's a prototype and stuff at the back, but I do have that photo. So it is what it is. Uh, this is the newest phone on this list. Like I said, 2008. And it's a really sleek device, as you can see here with the reflective uh, sort of chrome-ish design uh, with the uh, outlines and stuff. 
pretty sleek looking device with this uh, hinge back design like that. Uh, also on the Verizon network. And like I said, it has Verizon marking there as well. Verizon prototype marking. Let us get into the battery bay here. Now it's kind of stuck here and I'm doing this off camera so I don't have to edit out IMEI numbers and stuff. This thing also does not have a proper IMEI number, but I can cover up the main stuff here. Okay, there we go. So the hex M-I-E-D, uh, the M-E-I-D, like I said earlier, the IMA number for some phones, the hex uh, M-E-I-D also starts with A and a bunch of zero. So you can tell that's a prototype uh, assembled in the USA. Yeah, so uh, these, a lot of these phones, the, the Rocker Z6 and this one uh, are assembled in the US from probably using parts from all around the world, but assembled in Motorola's old uh, US factory. I don't think that factory is still open anymore for mobile phones. They probably produce other things but I don't think they make mobile phones there anymore well, yeah they don't at all uh, Motorola is owned by Lenovo now so they don't manufacture phones in the US at all uh, however this and the Rocker uh, Z6 came from that factory, Motorola's US factory. Uh, FCC, TB, uh, FCC is also TBD. The IC is also TBD. So the FCC is pending at the time of this phone being manufactured. Uh, this is a testing unit after all. So uh, clearly prototype stage, but late stage. So uh, this phone is confirmed to be released and all of that stuff. Uh, Motorola has just given it to uh, Verizon to run their tests and all that stuff. Let's see if this thing works. Okay, it works. Perfect. Verizon Wireless. It should be identical. These phones are roughly from the same era. Uh, this one is the slightly older one from 2005, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, the screen again, it's got that rubber stick all over it. That was, that was while I was cleaning it. I got to clean it again properly. Stuff doesn't go over. That stuff doesn't go away easily. The rubber was not on the screen, but I had to touch the screen as well. So yeah. Invalid battery. It doesn't seem to like that battery, just like the previous one. Warning: Your device may be located anytime. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so a slightly different. Ooh, this menu looks nice. Look at that. That's a really nice menu design. I have not seen that before. Um, I don't own too many Motorola flip phones, so this may be new to me. But let me know down in the comments. Have you seen this sort of OS before? This is definitely a proprietary OS. It's not like. Uh, um it's not something that's common uh it's a proprietary os of some sort um but yeah that looks really nice is this moto mag x i cannot confirm kind of looks like it doesn't it could be moto mag x i'll put it up there if it is moto mag x but if it's not i'll just leave it as it's probably then a proprietary os of some sort but it kind of looks like moto mag x and moto mag x is an old uh, linux based operating system that motorola used in some of its older sliders and flip phones um so yeah, interesting looking OS there. Um, very nice, I really like it. Uh, definitely looking forward to uh, having a closer look at this phone in a different video. But yeah, that was the uh, uh, the Motorola W775. Uh, Did I, I'm probably mixing these up now. Uh, yeah, it's the Motorola W775 from 2008. Motorola W775, let's power this thing off and we will get back to it in a separate video. So that was the Motorola W775 from 2008. Okay, so next we have the Motorola W380 from 2007. So uh, the 2007 Motorola W380 and out of all the phones on this list, this is actually the most rare phone. Um, this thing, I've seen only like one or two on eBay. I think there's just one of them on sale right now. So this phone is super rare and the fact that it's a Verizon uh, prototype, it's even more rare. Uh, this was also the most annoying phone to clean off in terms of rubber that I've ever seen. This thing was basically rubber central. There was rubber everywhere, just stuck. And uh, it was just really annoying to get off. It came with a flap-like thing on the side. It fell off and uh, I cannot find it, but I'll find it later. The flap is still intact. It just fell off from its uh, hole there. Um, but yeah, the most annoying phone uh, to clean in terms of the rubber, uh, the Motorola W380 from uh, 2007. So. Let's go ahead and open its battery bay. And uh, I can show you, this one is actually made in Korea. So uh, unlike the others, this one was made in a Korean factory. Um, let's see, uh, how do I cover this thing? Okay, that should do. 
So Motorola Inc. FCC ID pending XXXX made in Korea. As you can see, the MEID is also uh, a bunch of A's with uh, a bunch of zeros with an A at the beginning. As you can see there, A is 0000. And again, up top, Motorola Inc. FCC ID pending XXXX made in Korea. So uh, yeah, this is also another CDMA phone, by the way. So let's go ahead and put a battery in this thing. Okay, so the battery is in. Let's see if this works. It should work, uh, most likely. Yeah, there we go. Um, it works just fine. Um, so let's see. I'm pretty sure all of these run in identical OS, especially these three. That one OS is going to be a bit different because it's older. It's three years older than these three, uh, or two years old, three years older than this. This thing is from 2005. So, uh, yeah, Verizon Wireless. Um, got a really colorful board, uh, keyboard there, as you can see, blue, pink, and green. That's pretty nice. Searching for network, nobody. You're not going to find your network. Uh, I mean, there is a network, but I don't think this phone can recognize it. Okay, there we are. Again, probably Moto Mag X. Yeah, this is running Moto Mag X for sure. Uh, it's a sa exactly the same as this. Well, they're from the same year, so makes sense. So there we go. Exactly the same OS. And let's see the inbox in messages. It's, yep, just, oh, it's actually the same number as well. The same exact phone number uh, that uh, Verizon was probably using for testing. It's also full of fake messages so definitely some tests will run on this phone to test uh, to test its uh, network capability so tons of uh, fake messages uh with the same uh, receiver so yeah whoever was testing this phone was uh the same person because it's from this probably from the same uh it's probably from the same person because the test number the 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 sender who sent the text messages to this phone is from the same number i remember that number um so uh it yeah it's exactly the same so pretty sure it's the same guy that owned all these phones and he was testing these for verizon probably one of the engineers uh this one has uh sent and drafts as well so yeah moto mag x the same as that one not uh, else to see here it's just this one's a flip and that's a slide we'll get into this phone later in a later video and we'll get into all the details about it as well uh, this one is the most rare of the lot it's a very rare phone actually just two or three on eBay I've seen uh, ever for sale there's only one for sale as I remember a uh, very rare phone and really uh, a nice addition to my collection uh, we'll test this phone out in its own video in the future so definitely stay tuned for that so finally let's move on to the last phone all right, so this thing is uh, kind of self-explanatory. If you know mobile phones, if you're a collector, you, of course, already know what this phone is. Take a look on the inside because you will know uh, the black inside and the keypad and all that stuff only means one thing. And yes, that is the Motorola Razr V3M. Uh, the V3M is the Verizon Wireless CDMA Motorola Razr, the first ever CDMA Motorola Razr. Uh, and also a phone that was really cut down when compared to the normal Razer. Where is my normal one? Hold up. Oh, here it is. So uh, this is the standard uh, Motorola Razr first generation from 2005, around January. This thing was around September-ish. Uh, as you can see, uh, the keyboards are a bit different. Um, and um, inside, of course, uh, the standard one has a SIM card slot. This thing doesn't have a SIM card slot. But apart from that, the uh, V3M was heavily cut down when compared to the standard model. Uh, Verizon sort of like disabled this phone uh, in terms of many ways, like Bluetooth features, uh, connectivity features they kind of cut down a lot of stuff which was kind of a bummer i don't know why they did that i could not find online why verizon put cut down a lot of features on this phone but um the original Razer V3 was known for a pile of features, but in terms of uh, file transfer, I think, and Bluetooth transfer, Motorola, uh, uh, Verizon, sorry, Verizon cut down a lot on this phone, which was kind of a bummer and a dumb thing for them to do. It probably definitely uh, affected sales on their network because you can just switch to a ne different network and get all the features uh, instead of a cut down version of the same phone. So uh, let's go ahead and see if this thing works. By the way, this thing has a proper FCC ID and a proper IMEI number and all that stuff i don't really have to show you all that uh because uh, it's proper it's not a prototype this phone is not a prototype and uh, this is not an ideal battery for this phone this battery is too big uh in terms of thickness but the bk71 has the exact same uh exact same pin layout as you can see here so uh exactly the same pin layout and uh, we'll hold it in there and flip the phone over like that and we shall see it pop is on 
Okay, so it does power on Verizon Wireless. And yeah, the black on this is actually really sleek and nice. It's really interesting. Um, looks really nice. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, let's give it some time here to load. Verizon Wireless. My number. Oh, I should blank that out. That's the phone number of this phone. Um, initially, uh, it's kind of pointless. I don't think anyone uses that number anymore, but still, I'll just blank it out. Is this Moto Mag X? It looks like Moto Mag X. Um, I don't know. They all look the same. It could not be Moto Mag X, but uh, the OS definitely looks the same. This thing, yeah, it definitely has the fake messages. Let's see. Yep from the same number and uh, the f same fake empty text messages. So yeah, definitely the same owner. This is not a prototype, so I don't know what he was doing with that. Maybe this was like a pre-release unit or something like that before the uh, phone was released, so who knows. Uh, but the number is the same, but there was a different number on this one as well, so he definitely ha had a secondary phone as well. Oops, I shook the battery, the thing turned off. Uh, but yeah, it's fine, so big deal. Uh, we can uh, turn it all, we can, uh, we can uh, turn it on fully in the next video. We, as you saw, it just worked just fine. So it is what it is. Uh, I kind of shook the battery there. I'll find a proper battery for this thing later. Uh, it uses the same battery as this, but this doesn't have its battery either. So yeah, all four phones work. The three prototypes work as well, uh, which is uh, what I was looking forward to, the three prototypes. I didn't know this was not a prototype. I thought that all of them will be prototypes, but when this turned up, it didn't seem to be a prototype. Uh, nevertheless, it's a great phone to add to my collection. I was thinking of getting one at some point but I was kind of putting it off but hey uh, it came with this lot so here it is and yeah so stay tuned for all of these phones in their in future upcoming videos where I focus uh, specifically on each individual phone I hit that subscribe button and stay tuned and as usual I hope you enjoyed this video and if you honestly did don't forget to smash that like button down below and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well and ring that bell notification button so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Also don't forget to leave a comment or a question down below and let me know what you think about this video or if you have any questions about these phones. Uh, leave a comment when we can start a discussion or I can answer your questions. Don't forget to check out my social media which is linked down in the description below which includes Instagram, Discord and Twitter. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.